Hi everybody, Rob from Two Turtles. I'm doing a third take on this. Today we are planting Mystery Keeper tomatoes and I'm going to show you how to do it without going through a big bunch of work. Mystery Keeper. Now what's unique about these tomatoes is that they're storage tomatoes. They ripen from the inside out and they're a heritage variety. So we're going to just come on over here, pardon the mess, and you can see I'm just going to put these, I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, well, I guess I put a bunch there, but I don't want them all there. So I'm going to be moving them around. Let's see how good I'm at this. Not bad. I got two together. I don't want that. Put that over there. And you say, Rob, what are you doing? One, one to a cell. You don't worry about that too much with tomatoes, guys, because uh, they are uh, easy to tear apart. It's not a big deal. I'll be back. Okay, I moved everything outside here, guys, and uh, you can see I just lightly covered the tomato seeds. There's none at the surface, but they're pretty close, like maybe, ooh, quarter of a centimeter, 25 millimeters. So what I got to do is I have to water from the bottom up, guys. There you can see that. All right, a little hole there. That's important. Your solo cups. Now I'm going to have about four or five tomatoes in here. And some might say that that is crowded, isn't it, Rob? It's floating a bit. <laughs> Hopefully that stays there. Uh, it might be, but uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, just going to get this watered up, and then I'm going to take it inside tonight. We're going down to uh, minus uh, three tonight, I believe. Now, you know, I'm just going to do a little look around now that we got the Mystery Keeper tomatoes put in there. But i got to tell you about these Mystery uh, Keeper tomatoes before I get wandering off into Mars and everywhere else. Um, they are a heritage variety of tomato, and they are storage tomato. And uh, they can store whew, February, March. I thought you had to wrap them. Uh, you don't have to wrap them. Just leave them in a uh, cool, dark place. Uh, for the winter and when you want actually I just put them out on the counter and it seem to be fine doesn't need to be dark doesn't it but wrapping them not necessary but you don't want them touching each other because when they touch each other I have no idea why but they rot okay so don't let them do that uh, I don't know what else to tell you about this there's other kinds of uh, storage tomatoes as well and you can look them up if you're interested in that we're just going to take a quick look around see what's going on you can see we've had some frost burn on some of the plants. It's been getting down to minus three here. I've covered them and you can see they're a little bit rough. You don't really need to cover them, but my wife and I like to play. And then here, you can see my storage containers. And there's tobacco in there and a couple of broccolis have germinated. I've got some uh, jalapeno peppers. This is not the weather for germinating, but in that hood, it gets well into the 20s when the sun comes out. Hey, moon we got a little visitor and then I've got the uh, I've got our uh, pest control stuff here that's our plants that are protecting our uh, other plants from rabbit rabbits and mice and other things marigolds and my wife has planted some beautiful spices here and uh, different herbs and uh, they haven't come up yet but I mean it's cool weather right? And then, of course, we'll take a look over here at our chives. I covered them up, too. You really don't need to worry. But you'll find when it gets really, really cold, the tips will burn. But, uh, don't worry about it. I, uh, was back here a while ago. I made a lasagna, and I put spinach in it. And believe it or not, I put a couple of dandelions in it, too. Because dandelions are good for you. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if it's like mustard green or something or what the hell it is. But uh, there's the state of the uh, spinach right now. I'm not covering it up. You can see I got a little burn there. The lettuce has been eaten by rabbits. So next year this bed's going to be a little longer. I actually uh, planted this out in the fall and uh, covered it up with the tarp as you can see. And it made it through the winter no problem. The lettuce had a bit of a hard time. But the issues we're having is with the bunnies. So what I would do here in a case if I really cared, I would uh, cover it with the uh, chicken wire to prevent the bunnies from getting in. At least give them a little extra. They have to do a little extra work to get in anyway. So that's the story with this hoop house. And I got uh, two more hoops that I'm going to put down here.
and you can see I'm killing the grass off here and I'm going to extend the garden so that in the springtime next year maybe even this winter we'll have some spinach um, I like fresh spinach and I mean in the springtime there's no better spinach than what you get right here in your garden I took started harvesting March the 28th just to give you some uh, ideas on how to do this and I've done this a couple of years and the one thing that uh, I noticed even if there's snow on the ground it doesn't matter it's the temperature in the hoop house once the Sun gets into the horizon to a point um, it uh, is enough energy in there and it gets stored in there for a little while I, you know, I use three millimeter plastic just the kind of stuff you put over insulation and I double it up so it gives it effectively a six millimeter but then those air pockets also help too Ooh, you can hear the wind guys She's a windy day. Lots of wind and leaves flying around. Hope you can still hear me. Hang on, I'll take you for a tour of some of the other things. I think my wife might have some chives in here as well. And you can see wild lettuce sowing itself. How beautiful is that? Just let your plants go to seed. There's no need to be, uh, uh, like when you got a garden like this, just let everything go to seed. The morning glories that are here. They go to a seed and they just self-seed and once you get this established the key thing is just to improve the garden bed with some nice soil in the spring or even I don't know if you can hear me but I'm a little bit closer right now. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's raspberry cane. Maybe you guys at home could identify that. A whole rootstock, so I'm guessing that's what it is. Okay, we are back again, and I'm uh, here at the watermelon garden now. You can see all the compost and stuff I put in there. I just put in coffee grounds and spent uh, vegetables. So you can see some broccoli in there. If the deer come in here and eat it, that's great. And they haven't been touching it. I think the rabbits possibly might have been in here. I don't know. I'm looking for those little bunny nests, you know, the, 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 kind of like a spider web on the grass. Um, I haven't found any here, but if I did, of course, I wouldn't run it over. I don't want the bunnies to die. Let them live. I'm not worried about my lettuce garden because there's things I can do to uh, take care of that. You know, kill the animals. It's the least restrictive alternative. Just put the uh, chicken wire on there and you'll all be good. And make a little garden. I'm going to make a little garden for the bunnies so they can have a little special treat. So out here, my wife has uh, laid out some potatoes, but I'm trying to get some red Pontiacs for the other side. Seed potatoes, but during the pandemic, everything's a little bit harder to get. So we're going to place an order at Canadian Tire. I'm not pumping them up, but I'm saying that just who is available right now and who has the Pontiac Reds and Superiors. So I might go, my wife has talked about uh, putting Superiors in there or uh, Pontiacs, the red Pontiacs, but the red Pontiacs I think might do better in here. So we're going to put uh, one every two feet, which this bed is about 12 feet, so we'll get six potatoes in. And uh, that should probably give us a nice little harvest. And then on the other bed, I don't know if you can see that, but we'll get over there. This other bed might be better for the uh, superior. But, uh, of course, my wife will let me know. Because <laughs> that's the way it goes. Hey, happy wife, happy life. So they got eggshells in there and I put some grass clippings. My neighbor was kind enough to uh, rake his uh, garden, his uh, grass up. And he understands that we're more of a naturalists than anything else. I mean, we don't garden naked, but you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let you guys go because you may have something to do. It's obviously, it's Good Friday. Happy Good Friday to everyone. And I hope you're enjoying your Friday evening. And if you check this video out in the evening, I hope you get some entertainment value. Anyway, it's been Long Winded Rob from Two Turtle Gardens. And I wish you a very good Friday. And take everybody, gracias amigos, over and out, Rob.